Okay, hello everybody. Just had a wonderful ride out onto the Hudson. Uh, I want to introduce some folks that are here with us today. Uh, Pete Malinowski from uh, the BOP, uh, Nicolette Witcher from HRPT, thank you Nicolette. Christopher Pickerel from Cornell Cooperative Extension. Uh, Emily Maxwell from the Nature Conservancy, uh, Emily. Mark Eisman, old friend, NRDC. Sarah Man Marinello from the Wildlife Conservation Society. Rob Perani from the um, Hudson River Foundation, among many things. Uh, Ned Sullivan, Scenic Hudson. And Greg Williams from Clearwater. So again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all, uh, all, of, all of the advocates here for uh, your many years of, of hard work on uh, not just shellfish restoration, but really environmental protection here in New York Harbor. Um, we've uh, uh, almost unthinkable to look back 30 years ago to what this park was um, and what it is today. Uh, walled off from the community 30 years ago today, now obviously a vibrant park, and we have the chance to then think about the water quality as it's recovered, what we, what we can do to enhance uh, restoration. So it's really exciting today. Um, after, after so many years of hard work, and in particular under this governor, Governor Cuomo, uh, for what he's been able to accomplish on the environment, for us to be able to launch something really significant here, right here in this park. And uh, uh, I am proud to, to, uh, to introduce that today. Uh, the governor is launching a comprehensive oyster restoration plan for this park. Uh, today, we took a short boat ride down, down river between the um, Holland Tunnel Vents and Pier 26. Uh, is a beautiful area, uh, perfect for restoring oysters. Uh, the governor dropped down a, a gabion cage uh, full of uh, thousands of oysters into the water. It's the first of, of, of many. We are certainly not stopping there. That is our phase one. Phase two is a $1.5 million investment uh, that we are making for four acres of oyster habitat and restored habitat uh, right here in this, in this area, right just south of the, of the vents. Um, and then of course, uh, phase three, which is a 50-acre uh, restoration of oysters uh, right here in the Hudson River Park uh, that will uh, uh, do many really important things. First of all, fil filtering pollution, and then storm resiliency of these cages once they begin taking hold, uh, do an incredible job in, in intercepting storm surge and the effects of severe weather. And, uh, and this is really, uh, for us, uh, we've been at this now for a few, a few years. We have a great program that the governor has, has supported and driven forward. Uh, I'm proud to announce a, a $1.4 million investment in a similar oyster restoration program at the mouth of the Bronx River. Um, and that is underway and should be done in several years. Um, so I would mentioned the, the real benefits of it, uh, obviously an extraordinary benefit of it. Is, is the public education of, of what, we're, uh, what we're doing in New York Harbor, restoring water quality, bringing people down to the waterfront, filtering water, protecting the city from, from the incredible effects of storm surge. So today's a very exciting day, and, uh, and, and, and all of these groups here deserve a great round of applause for all that, all that they have done uh, for New York's environment. Um, but that's not the end of the story. Uh, a very special individual here who has been leading this state now for nine years. And I can say, having been with him for eight years, that uh, there is no governor in America uh, doing right now what this governor is doing for the environment. Whether it's clean energy, whether it's land protection, whether it's water protection, uh, 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 protecting our animals, opening up uh, this incredible state to recreation. Uh, there's one person who stands truly above all other governors in, in this country, and that's Governor Andrew Cuomo. And I'm proud to, proud to introduce him today. Governor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, and I want to welcome and thank uh, all the advocates. Uh, we have a great uh, environmental community in this state. It's one of our great blessings. We birthed the environmental movement, uh, and we still have the strong expertise. So I, I want to thank them all very much. I want to thank the Hudson River Park, which is a great uh, jewel for this state. It's amazing uh, what the West Side has done and how instrumental the Hudson River Park has been in that. Uh, and this is a great compliment to the Hudson River Park now, a true uh, uh, resource recovery. Uh, this is going to be a project that uh, school children can come and watch. 
Uh, and uh, I want to thank the Hudson River Park very much. Um, Commissioner Basil Sagos is the best environmental commissioner in the United States, and that's why uh, this state is, uh, the, has the most aggressive environmental protection program. And I want to thank him very much. Let's give him a round of applause. I also want to thank a special guest who's with me today, uh, my daughter Mariah. And it's appropriate that she's here because what we're talking about is going to be more for her benefit and for the next generation's benefit than anyone else. The Native Americans have a great proverb that says so much. We didn't inherit the earth from our parents. We're borrowing it from our children. We are just public stewards. And the question is, when we leave this place, do we leave it better than we found it? Uh, and that, to me, has always been the guiding principle when it comes to the environment and environmental protection uh, and conservation. Uh, we are at a critical point for the environment. I think everyone gets that now. You turn on the news, you just read a newspaper, you see what's going on. There's storms, there's hurricanes, there's floods, there's fires. There is no question for any rational person but that the earth is out of balance and we see extreme weather patterns that we've never seen before. We tend to take a symptomatic approach when we deal with problems like this, symptom by symptom. And we do it all across the board. Why? Because it's easier to take bite-sized pieces, to take small initiatives. Yeah, it may be easier, but it's not as effective. Find the illness and treat the illness. The illness when it comes to the environment is that we have polluted our environment, whether it's air, water, land. We've done it for decades. We thought we were immune from any repercussions, and we were wrong. And now it's coming back to bear bad fruit. We polluted and we destroyed the natural defenses that were built in originally by Mother Nature. We did both. We made it worse and we destroyed the system that was there to protect it and to clean it. So what do you have to do? You have to stop doing harm, stop the pollution, clean it up, and then restore the natural systems. The Hudson River is a perfect metaphor for this. This is, was at one time truly endangered uh, as a river. It was uh, polluted all along the river, especially up north from General Electric. We've gone through an extensive protection period and cleanup period. We're still fighting the cleanup with the federal government and the EPA approving the GE cleanup. But there's no doubt that the amount of pollution has been greatly reduced and the cleanup has been very aggressive. The next step is now restoring the natural system that was there to clean the water to begin with. Uh, and that, in many ways, is what we're talking about today when it comes to the Hudson. Oysters. Uh, when Henry Hudson first came up this river, there were 350 square miles of oysters. One oyster filters about 30 gallons of water per day. We destroyed the oyster population in the oyster reefs. Yeah, that was the natural filtration system. The original oyster reefs could filter the entire volume of New York Harbor in just a few days. Just think about that. The natural system, the oysters alone, filtered the entire volume of the New York Harbor in just a few days. And that is now wiped out, and that is gone. And today, we announced the beginning of a very aggressive approach to restore the oysters, restore the habitat. But the general point is uh, we're going to take to a statewide scale. And this state is the most aggressive and the most creative when it comes to protecting the environment. Nobody is doing what we're doing on climate change. No other state is doing what we're doing on renewables. 
No other state is aggressive on environmental protection, investment in our environmental protection fund in renewables, etc. The next step is this, to restore the natural systems that existed in rivers and lakes and in bays to at the most aggressive rate possible. Restore the natural system, the natural stocking, and protect and restore the habitat that created that natural system. In January, I do my State of the State, and we're going to announce that as a full statewide program. Today is a small snapshot of that. Between now and January, we're going to be traveling around the state, the Environmental Commissioner and myself, identifying priorities in each region that do just that, restore the natural system and restore the habitat. So for Long Island, uh, you don't really have as much an oyster uh, restoration program. You have a cl clam restoration program. Clams were indigenous to the Long Island Sound, the Peconic, et cetera. Upstate, you talk about fish restocking. You talk about removing dams so rivers have the natural flow once again. Uh, stocking in freshwater lakes upstate, which many serve as water sources. We'll have the full program outlined in January. And again, it will be a national first in that it will be uh, the most aggressive and the most progressive. But today is a start down that road with uh, oysters here in Manhattan in the Hudson River. Uh, why do I say we're going to be the most aggressive? And I stress that we are the most aggressive state in the nation when it comes to protecting the environment. Because the clock is ticking, my friends, and the clock is ticking very quickly. Uh, you look around, just be real about what's going on with this climate change and the extreme weather. And you know that the clock is ticking quickly. So we have to be aggressive and we have to be creative and we have to do things faster than we've anticipated doing them in the past because we are just running out of time. And New York should set the bar of what states should be doing. If we're waiting for the federal government to lead the way, it is a fool's errand. This federal government is doing the exact opposite. Hardly a week goes by that this president or this Congress doesn't announce less environmental protection rather than more. This past week, they did it again, rolling back Obama uh, administration regulations on clean water. So, I'm not waiting for the federal government to change. I'm not waiting for the federal government to have a change of heart. I'm not waiting for the Congress to see the light. New York will help New Yorkers, and New York will lead the way. Thank you all for being here. Any questions for myself or Commissioner Sagos, please feel free. Whatever the, between now and January, we'll be developing the program and the cost. Uh, I want to communicate with the, each region, speak to the advocates, the providers, the environmental community in that region, find out exactly what they need and how fast they can come up to scale. So Long Island, for example, we're already doing a very ambitious clam restoration, uh, which is working very well. Clams filter about five gallons of water per day. They were natural to Long Island. They're an essential part of the ecosystem. Uh, how do we increase that? What is the capacity to increase it? Uh, and we will fund uh, to the extent we have capacity and priorities in that region. And we'll do that region by region across the state between now and January, to total that up, and that will be my budget proposal. Well, uh, I'll ask the commissioner for specifics. But look, it, it makes a difference today, right? 
oysters, uh, one oyster does 30 gallons per day. One clam on, in Long Island is five gallons of filtration per day. The resiliency, the natural system for resiliency were the oyster reefs. We destroyed them. We're now rebuilding a resilient border around Manhattan. Yeah, because we destroyed the oyster reefs, which were a major step towards resiliency. But the, the, uh, the question is not when do you see results. You see results immediately. The question is how fast can we get to scale and what is scale? Well, to get to, you had 350 square miles of oysters, right, when Hudson came up this river. Uh, they were uh, the food source. They, uh, we used the shells to make roads. I don't think you ever get back to what was here. The question is how much can you get done and how quickly can you get it done? And whatever, that's what we were just discussing on the boat when it comes to oysters. That's what we've been talking about on Long Island with clams. How many can you grow? How fast? Uh, and how many can we plant? And as much as we have the capacity to do, I would do immediately. Because you're right, we'll never get to where we were. So the question is, restore as much as you can as quickly as you can. Commissioner? I think that's absolutely right, Governor. I mean, that's why the governor has, has merged uh, habitat as well as introducing, uh, reintroducing the species. Once you put the, the habitat in a better place, you can talk long term about self-sustaining populations, whether it's here in the, in the, with the oysters, the four acres that you'll see in, in a matter of months, um, or if it's, you know, restored habitat upstate on some of the, some of the, uh, the, the issues the governor was talking about on rivers and streams. So the idea is self-sustaining populations. That could be many years down the line, but we're committed now to, to doing that here. But how dirty is the water? It's much cleaner than it ever has been. I mean, this, this right now, um, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, people were not coming down to the waterfront for good reason. It smelled and it was, it was, it was dirty. Um, billions of dollars of investment, the state's driven, uh, that the, the city has made over the years as well, uh, has, has changed the fortunes of, of this waterway. Is it done yet? Absolutely not. But we will, we will at least have a, have a chance to see that in our lifetimes, water quality that meets, uh, water that meets water quality standards uh, around the clock. Do you have methods for what you're expecting to happen with the oyster stock, like how many measures? Well, we know when a, when a mature oyster gets in the water, it's going to filter out, as the governor mentioned, the, those 30 gallons a day. I mean, that, once we know how many are in there, then we can do the calculations as to you know, how many uh, gallons are being filtered out every day. So that's your metric. Uh, but we're going to use uh, numbers of oysters to know the volume being cleaned, as well as the acreage, which is important for all those other things that the governor talked about, climate resiliency, storm surge, and then the public education component as well. Okay, any other questions? We will if necessary, uh, but state regulations, uh, unless the federal government specifically countermands the state, the state regulations apply, uh, and we already have some of the most aggressive standards in the country. Uh, if they did something to scale back New York standards, then yes, then we would uh, compensate. Okay, thank you all very much, thank you.